Oh, you're wearing the bracelet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Thanks. It makes me so happy. That's great. It makes yeah. me happy, too. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're on. Oh. Hi. Hi. We're officially on. We are officially on. And I actually asked Barbie if I could mm-hmm. talk about something that's really passionate to me. Something that I really care about. And we thought we should share with you guys. The ocean. The ocean. Now, I'm going to call this vlog Five and Five. And it's something that we can all do to help the ocean. Before we even get started, I want to dedicate this vlog to Sylvia Earle. Oh. She's a marine biologist, an author, and an explorer. She's the reason why I wanted to become a marine biologist. And fun fact, she is known as her deepness, because she's the first person to walk solo for a quarter of a mile underneath the surface of the ocean. What? She spent over 7,000 hours underneath the water. That's incredible. In fact, didn't Time Magazine call her hero for the planet? Yes. Da, 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 da. She's amazing, and she's, again, the reason why I wanted to become a marine biologist. She's written a ton of books, but the one that really caught my eye when I was eight years old is called Dive, My Adventures in the Deep Frontier. And Earl also helped create the Deep Rover. That's a mini submarine that can go up to 3,000 feet underneath the surface of the so ocean. So cool. So today, I wanted to share five cool photographs that really communicate how amazing the underwater water world is to everyone out there. Now, all these pictures are going to come from National Geographic, and they're amazing. This first picture shows a diver watching an emperor penguin swim right by. Oh, wow. These are called orange sea squirts. They live about 200 feet underneath the surface of the ice. They kind of look like sponges. They do. They're kind of (laughs) cute. This photo was taken by Christina Mittermeier. It's a leopard seal. Did you know that leopard seals get their names because their spots look a lot like real leopards and trees? I did not. I do now. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ken. Oh, and this? This photo? This is one of my favorites. Doesn't it look like a palm tree? Yes. Isn't it? It's not a palm tree. It's what? called a feather star. It's not even a plant. It's an animal, and it can swim. This is a sea anemone, and somehow it got embedded into the surface of the ice. Scientists don't even know how it got there. Now, did you know that less than 20% of the oceans have been explored? So we should go snorkeling at Catalina this weekend. Oh, we should. You guys want to join us? Everyone should come. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) And now here's five amazing things that you can do to help save the oceans by you. Five and five. All right, Barbara, let's take turns. Let's take turns, Kenneth. (laughs) (laughs) Number one, reduce your energy use. Walk or ride your bike when you can. Don't forget to turn off the lights when you're not using them. And use energy-efficient devices like LED bulbs. Two, take care of the beach. Whenever you go to the beach, make sure to clean up after yourself and maybe a couple other people so that your stuff doesn't end up in the ocean. Always leave it better than you found it. That's a good plan. Right. Number three, volunteer. Be a part of a beach or a river cleanup. Those can be really fun. They are fun. Yeah. Number four. Dive in! Learn how to swim and snorkel and explore and learn about all these amazing creatures that live in the sea. Number five, spread the word. Share your love of the ocean and the importance of taking care of it. Like we're doing right now. Don't ever take it for granted. This was such a great idea for a vlog. (laughs) Thank you so much for doing it. Thank you so much. Peace. Peace! Hey everyone, how are you? It is such a beautiful day outside. I thought that I would do my vlog from the beach. Also, shout out to World Oceans Day. What better way to celebrate the ocean than to visit the beach, right? So a lot of you have been asking, what do I take to the beach? (laughs) And this seemed like the perfect time to share that with you. I like to keep it simple. First, I always take two bags. A small carry bag to carry my towels, two towels, one that I'm currently sitting on, and then one towel for after I go swimming. My other bag, my backpack. Okay, let's see what I've got today. Oh, the most important thing, sunscreen. Seriously, I lather sunscreen on all day. Oh, that reminds me. Do you remember that game show that my sisters and I were on? Squabble, squabble, squabble. Let the squabbling begin. We are Team Roberts. We did that not far from here, just down the beach. Those marshmallows nearly got us, but we pulled through at the end. (laughs) All right, let's see what else I've got. Oh, this is also really important. My journal. I love to draw and write and doodle. You know, I journal every day. The beach is just the perfect place for it. Oh, this is from the last time Ken and Teresa and I were at the beach. Ken found this beautiful shell and gave it to me. So I just keep it in my backpack and carry it with me everywhere I go, which also reminds me this. 
This is an aquamarine stone. It's my birthstone, so my parents gave it to me for my birthday. Isn't it pretty? Let's see what else I've got. For snorkeling, <laughs> can't go to the beach without these. We always talk about sunglasses being fashion, which they are, but they're also really important to protect your eyes from the sun. And a random loose macron that's floating around my backpack. It actually still looks kind of good. I made a vlog a couple weeks ago on how to make these delicious sweet treats, so you should check it out so you can make a couple of your own. So, so good. I love listening to music on the beach. This is what I am currently listening to. This is an underwater camera, so I can swim around and take pictures. How cool is that? Oh, I never go to the beach without a boogie board or a surfboard or a paddle board. You're never bored when you have a board. Am I right? <laughs> That's one of my dad's jokes. So, my day at the beach. I love it. It feels so good to be here on the beach and be completely unplugged and it made me think, how rarely we actually do that. I feel like I waste a lot of time on social media. Not just connecting with people, but scrolling and scrolling. And I'm just comparing myself to other people and that doesn't feel good. So I think we unplug. That's the challenge. We do one day to unplug from social media. What do you think? Are you in? Oh, Ken! Hey, Barbie! Hey, I'm over here! See you next vlog. Peace! Summer! Welcome to my first official summer post. And since it's summer, our minds went to sunshine, being outdoors, and how beautiful it is. And that got us thinking about what we could do to show this world how much we love and appreciate it. So Skipper Teresa and I, Teresa's first time on the vlog by the way, challenged ourselves to find a bunch of hacks to be kinder to the planet. Yeah, it's all about using less stuff and reusing more of the things we do use. Finding like a healthy balance so the planet can thrive. Or another way to put it, live a sustainable lifestyle. Yeah, so here are some easy hacks that we found that you can do right now in your own house or neighborhood to show the earth that you care. Dream house, lights, limit vampire power loss. So a lot of electricity gets wasted at night when we leave our devices plugged in. Yeah, so if you don't want to be a power vampire, you know, sucking up power you don't need when you're not using your computer or, or your phone or anything electrical, really, unplug. <laughs> when you're brushing your teeth, turn the faucet off until you're done. Bro? Yeah. yeah. There are so many great hacks in a kitchen. We could do a whole sustainability challenge just in here. Like the time we went an entire week without throwing anything away. And one of my favorite hacks is composting. Separating food waste from the rest of your trash and using it in the garden to help enrich the soil. Also, worms love this stuff. School, it's summer. But we spend a lot of time here. And getting here. So what if we carpool? Or better, walk or ride our bikes to school. <laughs> and think about this. We eat at school. So reusable water bottles and reusable lunch boxes make a lot of sense. Those are great things to do as individuals. Oh, but what about getting an entire community involved? Our whole class signed a petition to create an on-campus garden to help out the local bee and butterfly populations. And you know what? The school did it. Whoa, nice. It's such a great example of using your voice for change. We really do have more power than we realize. So here's the thing. I know protecting the earth seems like an overwhelmingly huge task, right? Like what can one person do that has any chance of making a difference? A lot. We just saw a bunch of little ways and a lot of a little changes add up. Like next time you see some trash at the beach, pick it up. You have the power to make a difference. Together, we have the power to do anything. <laughs> so you start by putting the red... <laughs> I 
Wow. <laughs> Stay together. Group shot. <laughs>